Welcome, welcome back to Crafting a Meaningful Life. I'm Mary Crafts, and as you know, I'm your host, and I've been with you, I don't know, over 255 times. So if you don't know me by now, you're either new or you haven't been watching. (laughs) All right, I have a very special podcast for you today, and uh, it just was one of those magical meetings that I happened to meet Wendy. Wendy, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. I want to acknowledge Paul, even though we're going to get to you in just a minute. So just hang on, type there. Okay. So Wendy and I met randomly about two weeks ago. We were at a symposium for uh, survivors and prevention of childhood sexual abuse. And if you don't believe that this is a huge problem in our world, you've been walking around with your head in the sand because this is a huge problem, not only Uh, in Utah, but in our entire global society. I remember when I first, the first time that I was in one of my projects in South Africa, in Pretoria, South Africa, where we worked in what's called plastic cities. And they are just plastic and cardboard, and that's what they live in. No water, no sewage, no electricity, no schooling, no police protection. And when I walked in there and I saw young men chasing after little babies, little girls, and ripping off their diapers, and you can imagine my horror. And I thought, well, why don't we just rush over there and beat the heck out of them? You know? and they're like, we are just making headway into their culture. And we can't begin to come in here like the big bad wolf, you know, if we have to teach them to trust us and help them. It was more than I could handle. But since then, as I have worked in this industry of safety for all of us, I have been drawn to so many different organizations. And that day that I met you, we were like two magnets. You were here, I was here, and we just went, <laughs> you're like, hi, who are you? And I need to know you. And why haven't I known you before? <laughs> all that And so it was really wonderful to connect with you. And then as you talk to me about the work that you're involved in right now and about your partner, Paul, then I thought, okay, we've got to get together. We have to share what you're doing and our vision for the rest of the world. And the only place that it's, that we can really start and truly make a difference is right here with us individually and how we perceive the problem and what we want to do with the problem and and how we envision solutions. And then we can take that out to the next step and the next step. So I'd like each of you to introduce yourself a little bit about your history, how you came to be together and partner with this problem of safety in our world and what you're doing about it. So Wendy, let's start with you. Okay, excellent. I love it. So, um, again, it's a pleasure to be here and thank you, Mary. You're right. It was a special connection yeah. that we had the opportunity to meet. Um, what an amazing um, place that we were at. And um, I love everything that you're doing. And again, you're like right in there with what Paul and I's mission and our beliefs and what we're trying to do as well. Mm -hmm. Um, So a little bit about us is um, we met, gosh, a decade ago and um, in work, we were working together in health and safety. And together, we also wanted to um, share more about like our experiences Mm -hmm. and continue to help other people. That's our number one goal. And I think um, probably one thing that's really important to us is like my analogy I love to use is the fact like the pioneers coming out here, out to Utah, out West. And um, during that, you know, horrendous time, they like were freezing in the winter time Mm -hmm. and they found like buffalo um, chips is what we call them. And they would actually use those and burn them for fire. So I love to say we take something negative, right? And turn it into something powerful and positive. And so I think that's what um, Paul and I's mission is, is to really help from a safety perspective. Um, We have an Mm -hmm. amazing podcast on whamsafety.com where we share our crazy experience the good, the bad, the ugly, Um, everything from we share about um, like officers who've been shot um, in the back of the head and survived 
to um, gosh, snakes, to um, helping people, like crazy fun stories, crazy good, crazy bad. And so um, we really want to share those experiences with other people and give them resources and support and help. And so that's what we're really trying to do. Paul, tell me a little bit about your background, uh, what you do other than work in safety uh, whamsafety.com and what you drew you to this work. Well, excellent. Thank you. And, and again, thank you for having us. Uh, I, I can tell there was an immediate connect between you two. Wendy was uh, yeah. quick to call me and tell me, oh, that she had met uh, a wonderful person. Thank you for what you do. Uh, thank you. My story is, is uh, it's just, it, it's interesting because uh, I started off as a paramedic. I started off um, and I uh, began taking care of people at a very young age, and as mm -hmm. I've matured, uh, my wife and I have have uh, raised four biological children. We uh, we became empty nesters for a short period of time. We started uh, uh, fostering children, fostered just a, a great number of children, adopted three of them, and mm -hmm. um, and now we are a forever home for a couple of children that. Um, that uh, really needed a, a yeah. fresh start, a new beginning, as I like to say. And yeah. um, and now I carry that over. I take care of people at work. I take care of people at home. But my role currently is I'm a vice president uh, of a artificial intelligence safety software company. And uh, mm. so it's, it doesn't matter where I'm at work or at home or with Wendy, with uh, whamsafety.com. We, we spend a great deal of time trying to take uh, individual stories and uh, and learn something from them, share it with the world so that perhaps uh, everyone doesn't have to have to have the same error. Maybe they can learn from someone else's mistake, someone else's situation and make their world a, a better place. I know that that's how it is for me. I am safer with my own self and with the lives of my children and now my grandchildren because of things like that. People telling me about their stories or increased awareness or watching um, podcasts about people's situations. I am more aware now. And there's a fine line between being aware, cautious, being in a safety mode and being afraid. So can one of you talk to me about how you see that line and how you teach that line? Because I think that as I talk to my children now, who are parents of my grandchildren, that's one of their biggest concerns. They want their children to be cautious, but they don't want them to be afraid. You know, that's something that's really important to us as well. And so I think kind of our motto on that is that be prepared, not scared, right? So teaching people what to do so that it's like if there was an emergency or something like that, um, you know, you have your emergency kit, you know how to react, you know how to respond, you have a plan of action, you're, you know, being aware of situations and you like have an idea as to what you're going to do. And so that's super important. And so that's what we're trying to do through like our podcasts and when we go and speak mm -hmm. and what we teach is that, you know what? There is some scary stuff out there, but there's it's a great world. But just be prepared and let's learn from these other individuals and from us that experiences that we've gone through. Like you said, Mary, um, I think that's such an important um, aspect that we can learn from other people and say, gosh, wow, that's what happened. Oh, my gosh. Now I know not to do this or that's a great idea. I'm going to implement mm -hmm. that. So that's really what I think we try to do. Don't you think, Paul? It is. And, and just one thing to add to that is that, you know, awareness, uh, awareness prevents surprises and surprises are where we find most of our risk and our injuries and our incidents. So if we can, if we can talk about it, chances are we can prevent it. Yeah. Uh, you know, t far too often we find parents, we find s supervisors or employers uh, or pastors. It doesn't matter what you're talking about, where you're talking about it. People oftentimes think that if we don't talk about it, it won't happen. But, but we find the greater awareness, the, gr the more aware we are, the, the less apt we are to be surprised by something and, and, uh, and, and subsequent injuries can be prevented. 
So obviously, Wendy and I met at the Supriya Symposium, which is on um, preventative and healing of childhood sexual abuse. But that's not the only area that you work in, right? You you have a lot of areas of safety that you feel all of us should be aware of. Share with me some of those different areas. You bet. Um, there are so many different areas um, that we encompass. And so we, like I had mentioned before, even like s funny things that we don't think about, like matter of fact, this is a good time of year that um, we share stories about like um, insects coming into our home. So ah. like spiders, right? Or snakes, or I mean, just little everyday things that we forget are really important. So we just have an array of safety um, issues that we discuss and talk about. And so that's what's so great about it is like yeah. you said, it's everything from you know, sex abuse, sex trafficking, all the way to like getting stung by a bee or, I mean, there's so many different things. What do you say, Paul? Well, and, and you know, the topical items certainly are uh, entertaining, but, but, but even, even equally as important, if not more important, are the health issues. We want to talk about men and women uh, in, in their personal health, their, their, mm. not only their physical health, but their emotional health. And uh, we find a lot of people are struggling and in times like these, the pandemic was something that we had never experienced before as a people, at least in, in our generation. So there are, there are so many things that we've learned that we had taken for granted, perhaps that, um, that we really thought would never happen to us. And now we're just trying to find those stories, those individuals that, um, that whether it it was a trial, whether it was a, a, a death, God forbid, or whether it uh, was just a, a funny happenstance. And we just try to try to turn that into some type of situational awareness that that, again, holds the power, if you will, to uh, to preventing an incident or preventing an injury in, in someone else. And I think that that's very interesting when you mentioned um, uh, the coronavirus and, and everything that happened with COVID and everyone's sudden awareness of staying safe. And I'm like, uh, you just should have talked to my mom in the 50s. I mean, that was because she taught me all those things. Wash your hands, you know what I mean? Don't cough uh, out like that, you know, cough into your elbow. Um, uh, wash your hands as often as possible. I mean, she she would have been just fine in this COVID world because that's just how she lived. and. I think so many people during the bad parts of the pandemic, though, there became a question as to who do I listen to? Is it the president? Is it the head of the, you know, the National Health Organization? Is it my personal doctor? Is it the news? Uh, is it my next door neighbor? And I love the fact that you have this website that people can go to if they have any questions of safety. And what, how do you advise people as to where to find the best resources if they have questions about their safety? And, and that, that question's kind of difficult because it just really depends on what the question is and what it, uh -huh. what it requires. If it's, a, if it's a workplace safety question, there are so many resources out there, whether it's a, a safety professional in your community or whether it be the Occupational Safety and Health Administration or whether it be the, the, uh, the, uh, an ANSI group or an American Society mm -hmm. of Safety Professionals group. I mean, there's, there's so many uh, uh, resources out there for workplace safety. If it's a, if it's a general safety health uh, I would rely on our personal medical physicians. You know, we've got relationships with them and, and, and hopefully you trust those relationships and those individuals to do their research, to give you proper information in relation to whatever it is that's bothering you. But, but really the best answer I think to that question, Mary, is, is that, that we don't know. The best thing for us to do is to read, uh, read various sources, uh, perhaps, um, uh, uh, contrary to what we may already believe, try to learn more information because I really believe as a child, I heard that, you know, learning is power and, and we would, um, uh, readers are leaders. And I, 
I spend a great deal of time in my current walk uh, breeding, and uh, I just don't think we can ever know enough. So uh, try to learn, you know, what everybody's saying about it, and in in attempt to um, to get enough information where we can make the right decisions based on on what we know. Tough question. You know, I think about different things that I find myself in where people are concerned for my safety. I'm not concerned, but they're concerned. <laughs> and they talk to me and they're like, Mary, you post all these photos when you travel. And that's like a big megaphone. I'm gone from my home so you can welcome to break in. And things like, um, I post way too much about me on my social media and uh, that you can go to my website and uh, my Mary Crafts Inc. website and find my personal cell phone number and all sorts of things on there about me. And But I can't always control the information that everyone else has about me. I'm always dumbfounded at some of that. Like, for example, when people are making decisions of who to invite to a nonprofit fundraiser, they can go online and find out people's personal worth. I'm like, I didn't know that. So how do I protect my, my personal safety and my personal information? What do you see as some of the best sources of that? That's an excellent question. So definitely those are some of the really key aspects that we are really um, trying to help um, teach people um, is to protect themselves. Because you're right, like this day and age, like people can see and know everything about you. And so you want to protect um, all of that information. And so it doesn't get into the wrong hands. And so definitely um, by protecting um, first off, like your cell phone number, your address, so people don't know like where you live. Um, and then also like even where you live, this is something we talk a lot about is um, making sure that you have cameras, you have alarm systems. If somebody can't afford an alarm system or cameras, they also even have like fake cameras that people can get until they can actually get cameras. So I think that's a really good tool. Um, alarm systems are another great um, aspect to have um, at your homes. Um, also, if you can't afford it, then you can also even just get like fake signs um, that shows and stickers that you put around your house to make it look as though you do have an alarm system. Right. Um, those are great things to help protect you. You can also put up signs that say you have a dog. Um, that's a really good deterrent for, um, you know, people that are looking to break into a home. They try to look for an easy place right. to target, right? Right. And so those are some of the things, getting to know your neighbors so that you have like a neighborhood watch program. That's a really key aspect because we can all keep an eye on each other. Paul and I tell a story on uh, one of our podcasts that um, this people in his community had got hired a company um, to put in an alarm system and then they knew all their personal details that they were headed out of the country for a long period of time and during that time they came and actually robbed them and so those are the things that we like say okay you got to be cautious on like what information you're providing because unfortunately there's people out there um that do negative things like that break into people's houses rob them that sort of thing so it's really being prepared and protecting your stuff and then if somebody did break in what are you going to do about yeah. that so think about those different opportunities do you feel comfortable with a gun um have you been trained with a gun so that you could protect yourself do you have a baseball bat do you have knives what are the different things that you have in place so if somebody was to break into your home what would you do so those are a lot of great i love that you asked that question because we get those questions a lot and those are the things that we try to help um, everybody be prepared because unfortunately there's people out there that are targeting all of us and so you just want to make sure that again kind of the motto you know be prepared not scared so that you have a plan of action that you know what you can do and some different options if something was to happen especially nowadays it's unfortunate it's so crazy but we hear about the shootings everywhere right and so again you know just different techniques that you can do to be prepared so if you're ever in that type of situation you can protect yourself and your family members and other people so those are definitely some great things that we love to help educate and that's what we talk about on our podcast and that we do in presentations to help people be prepared you know when i first moved in we built this home and i moved in 30 just over 30 years ago. 
Uh, of course, we didn't have any sort of, of thing like that, alarm systems or protectionism. And as the women in the cul-de-sac, we were talking one day about how we would protect each other and we'd watch and those kinds of things. And one day, I just for fun, I thought, well, this would be fun. I'm just going to put up a sign in my front yard that says, go next door. She's cuter and has better stuff. <laughs> I and love it. That's awesome. We laughed about that. I about how I was protecting myself, you know, and all those things. And then finally, I started thinking, "Boy, that would be awful if someone really did break into her place." And so I took the right. sign down. You know, I, I haven't had that up for a long time, but I do have personal protection here in my home, and Good. there is that kind of fear of, like, do I want to live in fear, knowing that I have a loaded gun somewhere close with me and I know right where it is and no one else in my family does. And when I do travel, I do post things like, and a shout out thank you to my family who's staying at my home. I thank you so much for being there, my two boys, blah, 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 blah. You know, I make th crazy things like that so that there is always that question like, you know, are those people really there? You know, and right. um, I have different lights that come on, you know, at different points of the time in the day. They are small things, but they are enough because I think that's one of the things we know about everyone who is out there trying to be a, per a perpetrator is they look for the easiest target. You know, we, if something, if a light comes on or if the doorbell speaks to them, hi, how can I help you? They're like, they're not for, you know, sticking and getting those packages and those kinds of things. So we do just even the presence and appearance of that we are mm -hmm. armed and ready can be a deterrent for people. And I love that. Do you have any, for, now that we're heading into the holidays, and do you have any suggestions for people to protect their homes? Or I've even heard about crazy things like people breaking into your trunks at the at the mall and things like that. So what, what specific things do you have for the holiday season? Paul, uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about your thoughts on that since you are working for cybersecurity? Yeah, well, I tell you, there there are a lot of things we can do. You know, we we tend to put up just say for, as simple. Let's just talk about Christmas since it's coming. Um, you know, we're gonna let's talk first of all about about shopping. There's just a host of of um, precautionary things we could do when we're shopping. Be sure to to uh, always put your packages in the trunk versus the back seat, just because. Yeah. Um, they're, out they're not of sight. so visible yeah. to the to, to the would be uh, to the would be the burglar. We've we've talked in a previous podcast about you know before if you're if you're a young lady, not that uh, not that ladies are more susceptible to uh, to uh, attack, but the reality is um, to to get someone to walk you out, you know. And and I know our stores are currently. Uh, struggling to find employees, just like it seems like most every other business in America currently. But but uh, go to the manager and just say, "Hey, Mr. Manager or Miss Manager, would you would you assign someone to, to walk me out?" Especially if it's at dusk mm -hmm. or after dark, and and you know, there's just so many things you can do. Remember, it's it's not that we're afraid; it's that we're aware. And if we yeah. if we look at these things not out of the sense of fear. But out of the sense of of prevention, we can we can think about, hey, what's the next thing I'm going to do? And uh, and so that's that's just a real quick and easy for shopping. But but what I started to say earlier was just even for positioning of like your Christmas tree, you put up this big fancy Christmas tree and then you you want to put it right there at the window where all the passerbys can see it. Yeah, it's right in my front living room. This. Yep. <laughs> That's right. Well, we, we uh, a few years ago, uh, Heather and I decided to move ours, and we would still enjoy it just the same, but it's not quite the, the spectacle to the neighbors to, or wow. to, the, to the people passing by on the front street. And uh, what we did in doing that was we just, we, we just reduced the risk associated with mm -hmm. that by a little. And if we if we do a lot of things and reduce risk by a little to a lot of things, in the end, that's a that's the reduction of a lot of risk. But again, it goes back to what what you say, Mary, as well as what Wendy said, and that is it just just becoming more aware of those things. Yeah, it is that fine line between 
um, being educated and being afraid. And um, I, we're getting ready. I guess maybe I can say this on the podcast, but I'm getting ready to go to New York next week. And I actually do have someone who's staying at my house. And I think right. that, but my partner who's going with me said, he's never been to New York. And he's like, so can we walk by ourselves outside? I'm like, yes, yes, yes. Because we're staying in Times Square. And he's like, can, I, can we, like, do I have to take special safety precautions? And I'm like, we do. We take special safety precautions. But New York can be a very safe place to be as long as we're aware. You're not going to carry your wallet in your back pocket anymore while we're there. It's just, it, that's not happening. And I always make sure that I have my purse over my head and and around here in front of me and that it's zippered and clasped and that I have a little lock on my purse and that it even, you can see it right off from far away. Oh, that that purse is locked. And so little things like that, that I think we can all be aware of to simply protect ourselves. I love that. Um, we actually just did a podcast on um, safety, like during the holidays. And I think it's episode 114 that everybody should definitely tune into because we give a lot of great yes. tips like that. Like you had mentioned, um, like your automatic lights and stuff. We talk about all of those things because I think those are fantastic ideas to help again to deter whether or not somebody was going to break into your house because they don't know if you're there or not. Yeah. If you have automatic lights that come on all the time. So those are excellent ideas. And especially for uh, traveling. Um, Paul and I talk a lot about that because both of him and I have traveled all over the world and like you it's so important to be super safe some really great things um, just for even for you guys traveling um, here next week is um, like I've actually had my credit card stolen from the time that I left the plane um, and I was walking into the area to go grab a cab they actually scanned my credit card and they started using it immediately so from the time that I got into the cab where I was at at, um, they actually had charged up all this money and luckily my credit card put a stop on it. But then the crazy part is, is I had, was picking up clients and they were in the taxi with me and I had to let them go and I had to try to figure out how to pay for the taxi because oh now they had already yeah. exhausted my credit card. And then I also was supposed to pay for lunch. And so I was like trying to figure that out. So what I've learned from that, a couple things is one, they have these really cool um, RFDI cards. They're really inexpensive. You can get them on Amazon for like six bucks. You put your credit card in it. So people can't um, just walking by. It can be at the mall. It can be in any public place that you just, um, it's the RFI D is what they're called cards and just slide those little cards in there and they protect your credit cards, your passports. I mean, they're fantastic and it's very inexpensive. You put that on all of your stuff um, in your wallet. They actually have wallets nowadays too, or purses that you can use. Um, but that's another great tool. And then to keep some extra cash, um, like, you know, somewhere else, maybe you keep it. This is a really funny old school way, but maybe in your shoe or somewhere else. So you have a backup. So if something like your credit card did get stolen what are you going to do right paul and i both know um people that's that's happened to and then they've been you know like oh my gosh i can't even now pay to go back home because i can't even pay for a cab or an uber or i can't even pay for my hotel and so those are like really serious issues yeah. that you want to make sure that you prepare for so keep some extra cash i know a lot of times we don't do that as much nowadays but do have an extra backup plan so that you're prepared so yeah. that if something does happen then you're good make copies of your um your your passport Always. your driver's license yeah. your credit cards yes keep it in your safe keep a copy on your phone so that you can refer back to it so that you can take care of those issues if they come up so there's yeah it's tons of fantastic ideas out there and that's exactly what we try to do is help people um realize they have a backup plan so again you're not scared you're just being prepared so if something does happen that it's not a big issue you can take care of it I always, when I travel, wear a, a fanny pack under my shirt and so no one can see that it's there and a bag enough shirt so it doesn't look like, what's that big bump on your belly? And uh, uh, and so that I am prepared just in those situations. Uh, when I was traveling one time in South Africa, this was quite a while ago now, I had a purse that did not have a clasp. It was just open. And I just thought, well, that's okay. I will always carry it right here in front of me. But then they are so quick that 
one day I just was doing something else. My purse was just hanging in there and I looked down and my phone was gone. Well, there were all my yeah. reservations, my travel documents, everything was on that phone. And I'm like, okay, what am I going to do? And then you can't even contact your credit card people or anybody because what? They have your phone. <laughs> Right, right. So that's an excellent example. So um, nowadays too, right, we never know anybody's phone numbers. So like here you lose everything. So you should have a copy of like written down phone numbers and credit card numbers because you don't know what they are. So if your phone got stolen and or your wallet, then you have a backup plan, right? That you can be like, oh my gosh, okay, I don't know anybody's phone numbers. Right. How am I going to get a hold of them? I don't right? even know and John's so phone number. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But that's why I thought it's so important like to have those backup plans. It's just being prepared. So like if there was a tornado or an earthquake, whatever that issue might happen, like you have a backup plan and you like know what you can do to take care of it. So it's not a you're not in dire straits, right? right? You're not stuck there. And you know, you can't go anywhere and you can't eat. And so you can't even get it back on the airplane. Right. So those are super great ideas that Paul and I try to teach people is just to be prepared so that if something does happen then you can take care of it and it's not a big deal you can shut down your credit card you have some backup money or another backup card um, they can't scan it you know all of those different things are super important so, so I important. love that that's ex I'll tell you uh, we could talk about this for about another hour so what uh, I what I'd like to do is first of all is send people to your website and to your podcast to learn about all this. It's Wham Safety, right? Ram, what? Yeah. W Wham Safety dot com. W A M, like Wham Bam, Wham Safety yep. dot com, and they have tons of resources on there. If you have a question about traveling or the holidays, or if you have questions about, you know, teaching your children about a stranger danger and, and how we do that so that it's not fearful, but so that it's just educated so that they can be uh, aware themselves and safe. So many things I was on your website. I was just like, oh my gosh, we could talk forever about this. So Paul, as we close today, could you share with me what would be your one thing that you wanted to leave with people today that would prompt them to action or increase their awareness of the safety needs of their home and family. Wow. Well, let me, uh, let me uh, preface that. I got a great thought, but uh, wham, when you're trying to think of whamsafety.com, just remember we all matter. W a M we all matter. And, uh, and in my closing thought or my lasting thought, I, I, I want us to plan, uh, you know, uh, expect the best, but prepare for the worst. And um, if you think I'm not a safety professional, how in the world would I know to make a plan? How would I know to make that list? Just imagine yourself mm -hmm. going to, in your example, Mary, of going to New York. Imagine, imagine losing your purse, what you would have to yeah. do. Well, go ahead and make that plan as if you were to lose your purse. Of course, you don't want that to happen. But in making that plan, you start thinking about all of the things that you would have to do if it happened. So that way, if and when it ever occurs, and we hope it doesn't, we'll be ready. And so I just say we, we, we stop going through life as if it will never happen to us. And we right. go through life in preparation to prevent it from happening to us. Safety is all about yeah. a choice. We, we rely a lot of times on chance and sometimes we get lucky, sometimes we don't. But if we make safety our choice, an intentional part of everything we do, we reduce the overall risk and guess what? We have le we're less apt to suffer in that uh, in that in that negative situation. So I just say, plan for the best. However, expect the worst, and uh, and make those plans out front toward prevention. You know, I thank you so much for your words of 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 safety and encouragement, 
And I truly hope my listeners take heed to this this time of year. This is a little bit of a takeoff from the things we usually talk about on crafting a meaningful life. But I hope to shout, your safety and my safety are as important as anything else that we talk about on this podcast. And it's hard to be focused on you know, how to become your best self and learn about self-love and self-care and all the things we talk about if you're not safe. And so let's start yeah. here. Let's start now. Let this be the first thing you do when you listen to this podcast is to reach out and learn about safety and how you and your family and all those around you can be safe. And then once we secure that, then we are so much ready, so much more ready to lift and serve others through their safety. Paul and Wendy, thank you so much for being here. We hope all of you visit WAM, W-A-M safety.com and have a safe and glorious holiday. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. Listen to the full podcast today and subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, and more. Crafting a Meaningful Life with Mary Crafts.